Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine if two vectors are orthogonal, which is perpendicular, or parallel, or neither. Now, we could go back to using the formula cosine of theta equals the dot product of your two vectors divided by the product of the two magnitudes. But you can see I said it really fast because we don't want to do that. We have a couple tests. And the two tests are if you apply the dot product between your two vectors. Now, I'm using w, so I'm just going to change my formula here. If you do the dot product between two vectors and you get 0, then you know they're orthogonal or perpendicular. And then we know we got it. Case closed. If the slopes are the same, then obviously we know we have parallel, right? Well, vectors, remember, are just kind of a directed line segment. So they have their coordinate points. They have your initial point and their end point or terminal point. Well, by tuning, the second component over the first component is going to give you the slope of the vector. So the basic thing that I like to do is apply the dot product first because I can do that pretty quickly in my head. And if I figure out that it's 0, then I know they're orthogonal. Then the next thing I do, if they're not orthogonal, I test to see if they're parallel by checking their slopes to make sure they're equivalent to each other. And then if that doesn't work, then I know that I have they're not orthogonal or parallel. So let's kind of work through the first one um, just a little bit slower just to make sure that we remember. Remember the dot product? Oh, I didn't write in the dot product. Uh, let's write the dot product again one more time. U dot W is equal to U1. Oh, it's not a vector. U1. Uh, times w1 plus u2 times w2. I keep on writing it as a vector, even though I keep on saying it's not a vector. All right, so you might want to write this in component form to make sense of this better. So it's 1 comma 1 as well as 1 comma negative 1. So when I multiply these, I get 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1. Well, that gives me 1 plus negative 1, which gives me 0. So my first answer is orthogonal. Uh, next one. Uh, let's do the dot product of v dot w. This is already in component form, so you can see that's v1, that's v2, that's uh, w1, that's w2. So let's go and do it. We have 2 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times positive 1. So in this case, I get negative 2 plus negative 2, which equals negative 4. OK, so it's not orthogonal. Let's check to make sure that they're parallel. So v2 over v1 is negative 2 over 2. Is that equivalent to 1 over negative 1? Well, yeah, you can simplify these both to negative 1 over negative 1. So therefore, this is an example of parallel vectors. Uh, the next one, example. Now, again, in this one, you could apply the operation if you want to, but let's just sketch it. If you have 4j, that's, you remember, here's your unit vector i, here's your unit vector j. So 4j goes up here, 3i goes right here. Yes, we obviously know that those are going to be orthogonal. OK. Uh, the next one, let's do the dot product, v dot w. So what I get is 2 times negative 4 plus negative 7 times negative 14. Uh, I can pretty much agree that this is not going to add up to 0. But uh, 7 times 14, that's going to be 70. Or 70 plus 28, so that's going to be 98. 7 times 14, let me just double check. 7 times 14, 98. Jibuyaka. And that's negative 7 times negative 14, so that's plus 98. So that equals 90, which is obviously not 0, so it's not orthogonal. Let's check um, parallelism. So I have negative 7 over 2 is equal to a negative 14 over 4. Well, you can see that they both reduce. That's going to be negative 7 over 2 is equal to negative 7 over 2. Divide top and bottom by 2, and it works out. Um, OK, in the next example, I have 3 comma 15 and w negative 1 comma 5. So if I do the dot product, I do v dot w. Um, which is going to be 3 times negative 1 plus 15 times 5. Again, I know this is not going to add to 0, so they're not going to be orthogonal. Oh, I forgot to write parallel. So that's negative 3, and that's 5 times 5, so that's 50. That's equal to 75. Right? 25, 50, 75. Okay. So that's now equal to 72. So it's not orthogonal. It's not even close. Let's check parallelism. 15 over 3 is equal to 5 over negative 1. Well, 3 goes into 15 5 times. That is equal to negative 5. 
So therefore, they're not equal. So this is neither. OK. Um, last example. Let's go ahead and apply the dot product. Ooh, this doesn't look like fun, does it? But that's OK. V dot w. So that's going to be 5 times negative 10 fourths plus 3 times negative 3 halves. You know, maybe let's simplify some work and let's think ahead to make sure that it's not going to multiply. Um, so therefore, that's going to be a negative 50 over 4 plus a negative 9 halves. Um, again, a negative plus another negative is not going to give me 0. So I'm not even going to work about finishing my fractions. Let's check the parallelism. So I have 3 over 5 is equal to a negative 3 halves over a negative 10 fourths. Again, when you have a fraction, divide by fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll multiply by 4 over negative 10, 4 over negative 10. That goes now to 1. So I'm left with a negative 12 over negative 20, which simplifies. Let's see, I can divide the top and the bottom by 4. And what I get is a negative 4, so then I get a 3 fifths. So guess what? This one does work. So these are another example of parallel. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine um, if you have two vectors are parallel, orthogonal, or neither. Thanks.